Alrighty, folks. Welcome back to the afternoon session. Um, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. I hope you enjoyed the, the morning session. Uh, first up uh, after lunch is Ian Dodson of the MD of Web Kitchen. And Ian's going to be focusing uh, very much on the customer, on the consumer, and why it matters so much to you, your business, and obviously to what you're doing, doing online. Uh, just a quick note, sorry, what you should have said first of all, is that the draw cards for the, uh, the very nice little iPad will be picked up at the end of the session. We're now going to go straight through from here, you know, through to, through to the end. So just to let you know, they'll be picked up at the end. So I'd like to welcome Ian Dodson. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a million, Richard. Uh, I'll see if I can earn that in the next uh, half an hour, okay, or, or a more enthusiastic one anyway, at least. Um, yes, uh, I, how are we doing on time? Are we, am I okay for 45 minutes, am I? Okay, so will somebody shout at me? Will you shout at me with 10 minutes to go? And, uh, and I'll try and um, keep it kind of focused and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, who am I? Well, for my sins, I run a company called Web Kitchen, and for my soul, uh, I'm the course director for an organization called Digital Marketing Institute. Uh, DMI was set up about two years ago, uh, I think it was September 2008 actually, just as Lehman Brothers was um, careening over the edge of the precipice and taking the world with it. Uh, Digital Marketing Institute was set up by about five or six agencies in Dublin, digital agencies and companies, to provide practitioner-led training programs in digital marketing. Um, anybody here a marketing professional? <laughs> just me, is it? Okay. Uh, anybody here uh, graduated uh, as a marketing professional in the past five, seven, ten years? Okay. Uh, any of you cover any digital marketing on your courses whatsoever? Okay. You'll be glad to know that things haven't really changed that much. Um, unfortunately, we're still producing graduates that don't have digital experience, hands-on digital knowledge, and that's why Digital Marketing Institute exists, really, because what we found was we were working with clients, and no matter how much skills transfer we tried to do, we'd walk out the door, the whole thing would fall apart, and we were fighting against a lot of things, lack of knowledge, culture, uh, established networks, and all kind of uh, different issues. So that's why DMI came about, and that's why it's now in Dublin, and it's in Belfast, and it's in London, and there's about 35 digital agencies across those three cities that now feed into the course by way of providing people uh, access to people who are doing it every day, really. Uh, it's, not, it's not bleeding edge stuff, it's not that crazy, way out there, wacky kind of things that uh, only Burger King have the budget to do, you know, those kind of things. Um, as somebody once said, uh, go to the bleeding edge and take about three or four steps back, uh, and that's where we want to be, and that's where we uh, work with people through Digital Marketing Institute. So we do short diploma courses and one-year postgrads and stuff like that, but uh, that's enough of the sales pitch anyway. I'll tell you more about that in a while. Um, I just want to basically cover two things. Um, I, I'm a complete and utter pain in the backside, uh, as I was, I was described uh, by a client of mine recently, and, and I'm, I'm very proud of that, actually, because I, I insist the whole time that, that people keep... Uh, their head on their shoulders and that they don't lose their marbles when it comes to the whole, this whole digital arc. Um, I'm not a silver bullet zealot who feels that digital and the web is going to suddenly cure world hunger, global peace and all those kind of things. I believe that it's a, a very important and crucial and vital part of the mix. Um, but I still, and I get calls I suppose, it's typically Monday mornings actually I get calls from clients. Uh, and the call typically goes, uh, come here, I, I saw that article in uh, the Sunday Business Post yesterday about, uh, you know, that Facebook thing. Sh should we be doing that? Sh should, we, should we be on that? Or, or my, my cousin's nephew's 12-year-old brother uh, shot a video of the dog in the back garden. He's got a million hits on YouTube. Sh should we be shooting pictures and videos of dogs in the back garden next week, you know? And that's the Microsoft marketing manager. But anyway, um, it's, no, not of course. So, so I get these calls all of the time and I get... Um, all these kind of reasons, and I've sat in meetings where people are quoted all kinds of reasons and reasoning and justifications for doing anything web-wise. And really what I want to talk to you about, number one is why do anything digital, number two, what's the right approach, and number three, where's the right place to actually do it. So that sounds very broad and, and kind of anonymous, so I'll, I'll make it a little bit more specific. Why do digital, first of all? This is a silly and pejorative question to start with, but I want you all to get a number in your head, okay? So rate on a scale of 1 to 10 the importance of the web to the success of your business or career. So just get a number in your head. Now, who's between 1 and 3? Okay, who's between 3 and 5? Was there 1 between 1 and 3? Fantastic. Who's between 3 and 5? Okay, few of you. who's between 5 and 7? Brilliant. And who's between 7 and 10? Okay, fantastic. Now, the reason I'm saying 10, by the way, and you might well wonder 
people are looking at me kind of like, well, look, what else was I going to say for crying out loud? I, I, I run a digital company. I, I'm lecturing on a digital marketing course. I'm here talking to you about digital today. But again, I really want to get at the heart of why 10. Why do I say that it's important? Why do I say that it's crucial? Because there's only one motivation. There's only one litmus test you need to apply to any expenditure, any time, any effort, any energy coming to events like this. There's only one reason to do all of this, and that's simply this, because that's where your customers are. If they're not there, close your folder, give Alison a shout, get a refund, pack up your bag, go home, don't worry, you're grand, you're laughing. Okay? If your customers are not online in some, I'm not saying all your customers are online, I'm not saying all, every demographic, every group of all of your particular target audience are online, but if your customers are online, that's the only motivation, that's the only justification for doing anything digital. Okay? So get rid of all the other stuff. You know, I asked a guy recently, why are you doing the course? Well, it's all the rage, you know? <laughs> it's all the rage. I thought, that's fantastic, great, fair play to you. Um, so it's all the rage, and it's, it's all the, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, reasoning and, and motivation. And I always feel that a lot of marketing is done out of guilt and fear. You know, I had a client recently call me up and say, well, I saw, I saw my competitor, they're, they're on bus shelters. Should we be doing that too? And you get, uh, especially in small businesses, by the way, if anyone is in the kind of SME sector in any way, shape, or form, small, small to medium enterprises are, are, are horrendous for this. It's kind of, you know, uh, I re we really should be doing marketing and, you know, the first sales guy that calls them and offers them 500 euros for an ad in something or other, oh, they buy that great and send the check and they've kind of, you know, satiated the guilt for another six months till they go on and do other things. And unfortunately, that's transferred right into the web as well, where you get people quoting all kinds of reasons for doing it well, we should and, and you know, but, but they all tend to forget the one most important factor and the only real meaningful justification for doing anything online is if you can tell me honestly, our customers are there. And then what your challenge basically is, is to meet them there. You know, if I were to describe a digital strategy in, in, in three words, it's meeting them there. That's as simple as that. Uh, I use that word very specifically. I don't say, uh, I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes anyway. So your challenge is to meet them there. And what I want to talk about today is, well, how? How are we going to meet them there? If we accept the idea that the only reason to do anything is because our customers are there, well, how do we do this? Where do we start? Do we go to the IT department? Say, guys, you know, can I, by the way, I know there's, there's predominantly marketing people here. Any IT people here today? Any people who would say, IT, fantastic, brilliant. I come from IT background. I worked in Oracle for seven or eight years around the world. So um, I'm firmly IT. Can I just make one suggestion to you, whoever you are in marketing? Um, do whatever you need to do to, whether it's stage a nighttime raid, or a dawn raid on your IT department, but wrestle control of digital and web out of the hands of IT people. And I say that with all due respect, I really do, and, and I'm coming from an IT background, because the motivations of the IT department are very different from the motivations of the marketing department. And I get calls from people saying, oh, will you come and talk to us about digital marketing? And I say, sure, yeah, who am I meeting? Oh, will you meet in Jerry, the IT manager? And immediately you just go, uh. <laughs> And what do you want me to talk about? We want you to tell us why this web thing isn't working for us. Okay, where's the marketing manager? Oh no, Jerry manages the, the website. You know, so you get all this stuff. Anyway, it's, it's, it's not a, an IT issue, it's a marketing issue, and it's very firmly in the hands of marketing people. So how do you do this? Where do you go? How do you start? What's the right approach in a sense? So if you accept that the only reason to do anything digital is because your customers are there, well, where do I go from here? What's the right approach? Um, I have a simple approach to, it's an answer to, 50 questions that I get asked all of the time. Should we do this, should we do that, should we do this, should we do that, whatever. Uh, I have a simple approach to digital and anything online. And that is start with the customer and work backwards. Okay, you can't fail. You simply cannot fail if you adopt that approach. And, I, and I'll expand on it a little bit here, but I didn't want to try and kind of set it all up and do a big reveal because, you know, anyway, okay. So my cousin James, okay, uh, I'm from Limerick. Anybody from Limerick? Go Munster. Uh, no, just me then, okay. Munster, to all you Leinster pretty boys. Um, so. <laughs> It's, uh, so I'm from Limerick, okay, and I grew up in Limerick in the 80s, and like a lot of people in Limerick in the 80s, there wasn't a lot to do, really, you know. Uh, Munster weren't even big at that point, or anything like that, so you couldn't really chase around rugby. I had a cousin, James, um, who used to, uh, we used to cycle around the neighborhood together at 14 and all this kind of jazz. About 17 years of age, around 1985, Jimmy said, look, I'm out of here, I'm going to the States. And uh, off he went to the States with um, his, his told, some total of his global possessions or his world, possessions were a sleeping bag, $50, and a phone number. 
Um, and off he landed in New York, got off the Aer Lingus flight in New York. And the phone number was of a, a guy called Jer Canning, who was based in New Jersey. And Jer Canning ran a construction firm. And Jer Canning, the poor guy, used to get phone calls literally morning, noon, and night. Hello, I'm your mother's uncle's, postman's, brother's, little sister's friend, and can I have a job? I'm over from Ireland, you know. So Jer was very good and very kind, and he'd meet them all, and he'd... He'd give them some advice and tell them where to live and where to go, but he wouldn't give them work because none of them knew how to work in construction. They'd never worked in construction. But Jimmy had. Jimmy had done some plumbing and plastering and all kinds of things. So Jimmy and Jer are sitting down, having a chat in the meeting. And after a couple of minutes, Jer says to Jimmy, give me that hammer there, will you? So Jimmy's kind of looking at him. OK, so he grabs the hammer and hands it to Jer. And Jer says, OK, will you start Monday? You know, $25 a day on the black or whatever it is, and uh, that's fine. So he started working for Jer. It was about eight years later at Jimmy's wedding. Um, Jimmy's now a fireman in New Jersey, by the way. And it was at his wedding about eight years later. Jer was there, and the two of them got chatting. And Jimmy said to Jer, what, what was the thing with the hammer years ago? Remember you asked me to pick up the hammer? So Jer maintained that he had this litmus test that he used to apply to every kid that used to come over from Ireland, that he knew by the way you picked up, held, and passed somebody a hammer, whether you'd ever worked in construction before. Okay? It's a simple little trick he used to apply. And what it was based on was the idea that the, the, the wrong way to hold a hammer, because I, I'm, I'm banned from DIY in my house at this stage, okay? because I hold the hammer here. Okay? Anybody with me on that? No? Okay. I hold the hammer up there at the heavy bit, because you know, that's the heavy bit, so you have to kind of control that part of it. Okay? The problem with that is that when you do any work by holding the hammer like that, you tend to break nails, smash wood, wreck shelves, typically followed by a spate of expletives, sweat, all kinds of problems, and my wife literally saying, we're getting a professional. So that's the thing. The, the right way to hold a hammer, actually, by the way, is down here, to hold it at the, at the bottom there. An engineer told me recently that it's all about a fulcrum and a uh, consistent distance from the point of your elbow to the tip of the hammer, and if you just keep doing that, you'll always hit the same spot. So I thought, yeah, that's fantastic. That was great. Uh, my point is, guys, is that the way you hold the hammer dictates whether you're going to do any effective work with it. Okay, and it's the exact same with digital marketing. The very way you grab hold of digital marketing tools dictates whether you're going to do any effective work with it afterwards. It's not, uh, when, when, I, when I assess digital strategies and, and digital work and the things that people do, it's never a technical problem. It's never, you know, long division, oh, you forgot to carry the one or something like that, or, or long multiplication or something like that, and suddenly it's all revealed and it's all fantastic. It's never a technical problem. It's always a conceptual problem with digital marketing, with anything web related. It's always, people have just grabbed the hammer in the wrong way. Typically what, it, what it, it involves, the first kind of conceptual mistake people make is, well, you know, there's TV and there's print and there's radio, and now you've got this other channel called the internet. And, and well, what's this? Well, basically that's just another channel out through which I can turf loads of stuff. You know, things like press releases, like, you know, grab all those press releases there and, and all those old brochures. And look, the pictures of Jerry from the Christmas party. Go on, whoa, hey, turf them out through, out through that digital channel. Because you know yourself, when people log on to Facebook in the morning, there's nothing they like better than just reading press releases. You know, you just kind of go, wow, it's just fantastic. So I won't ask the embarrassing question, by the way, of any of you who have Facebook pages and Twitter accounts who publishes their press releases out through their Facebook page and Twitter accounts. And would anybody like absolution at this point or would like to admit that they, that they do that or anything like that? So, so typically what happens is, the problem when it comes to digital and the web, it's a, it's a conceptual approach problem. Uh, and it's not a technical problem, because you can overcome these technical things with the help of the IT guys, thanks a million. Um, but really what it is, it's a conceptual issue. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to kind of show you the right conceptual approach as such. Sorry, it's a bit low on the slide there, but the conceptual approach that I would be advocating is start with the customer and work backwards. OK, now, what do I mean by that? Let me unpack that for a couple of minutes. Um, First of all, what you've got to understand about the internet is on the web, people vote with their feet, or in this case, their fingers. So anybody who ever surfed the web, anybody who ever surfed the web? No? Okay, just me then. Um, so you're sitting there and you're doing all this all day. Sorry, in my case, you're, you're doing this all day, okay? So you're doing that. And then you also, you've got a thing over here that you move around as well. Uh, mouse thing and you're clicking that and you're right clicking and you're doing this and you're, you're doing lots of that and you click, 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 okay? And that's the wonderful thing about the internet. I suppose one of the most important differences between the web and other uh, communications media is that you're choosing. You're not just leaving a breadcrumb trail. You are actively choosing every day. And it is access to those choices that provides digital marketing managers and people with a key strength, advantage, or differentiation point, okay? Let me, let me explain it to you like this in terms of start with the customer and work backwards, okay? 